Hi, welcome to Sonic Peak Studio. My name is Jakob, and welcome to the second video in the Behind the Mix series. If you want a more in-depth look at the equalization techniques that I have used here, I suggest you uh, watch the first video of this series, or check out my playlist about mixing basics, where I'll really go in, in, in deep on how to use the parametric equalizer. And in today's Behind the Mix video, we'll be looking at Alex Ball's song called Nexus, which is featuring the very nice Roland System 100M. I brought up the project here as it was finished in Ableton Live and mastered. We have the mastering chain down here, sorry. And I will start off by playing the track from start to finish while unfolding um, the different tracks and you should be able to uh, see the EQ curves of the different tracks here in the lower right hand corner. Okay, so without uh, further ado, uh, let's go. Oh, 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 
And there we go. And so, let's dive into the details of some of these tracks and see what's going on and what I've done to them. Uh, at the top, as you saw on the start, we have the drum bus. It's going through this SSL compressor. It's only taking a slightly bit of the transients off. And basically the console one here has no EQ. It's just basically there for me to uh, control the volume uh, of the track. Let's fold it out and in the top we have the kick that comes in at the start. And it's a little bit interesting uh, uh, what's going on here uh, on the track. Um, let's have the play. Now uh, let's solo the kick. As you can see here, um, there's a transient shaper going on here. And when it was delivered to me, it was actually quite long. And I thought um, that it ruined the punchiness, punchiness sorry, a bit. So I took off the tails a bit. Let's uh, see what's happening when I turn off the transient shaper. Without. And with. So we can try and unsolo that. Then it starts to interfere with the bass uh, when it's long and off. On. Off. And then I've carved out. I had to low cut this a quite a bit actually because it was so booming really down there and so there was no room for the bass and also I would like to uh, not put on the full low end before the end of the song when uh, it gets big and, and huge so I wanted to to uh, to save a little bit the best for last so that's why I did that now, um, and the snare here, uh, we can have a look at that as well. Um, there's a funny thing going on here uh, with this one. Um, let's uh, have a listen uh, to it. Now, this sounds stereo, but it wasn't stereo. Um, I have the normal EQ curve going on here, but here you can see I have a plugin going that's called Quick Hass. And this basically makes a very slight delay between left and right speaker, in this instance, 12.8 milliseconds, um, to give the impression of uh, stereo. So this is a fake stereo machine. Uh, it's free, it's great. Um, the way to use, this, use it is actually to tune it in mono, so that you tune this dial so that it sounds the best in mono. Um, and then you turn back to stereo or else you can get some really uh, good things going in stereo, but in mono it sounds really like crap. So you need to look out for that. Let's have a listen on and off. On, off. On. Great. So actually we can mono this now. Let's do that. Mono and on. Listen, you can actually hear the delay and then off. And then I tune this to give the least amount of artifacts in mono to, to get this nice uh, stereo spread. Great. And I've used this on more tracks, actually, as we we'll shall see later. Great. Uh, let's go to snare two. Uh, just a limiter on it um, and an EQ down here. Uh, Look at the limits here. It's just shaving off four to six dBs. We we'll try and on uh, and turn it off. It's not much, but in the mix, it takes off out some of the pokiness. And later we have the snare uh, A1 coming in, and that one has the quick cast uh, as well on it. Uh, and same story here. On, off, on. Let's go on. Okay. 
So that was some of the tricks that was implemented uh, on the drums uh, up here. And down here we have the ending, ending drums coming in, uh, the big huge ones. And I did another trick down here to get the most out of the snare. I think that one comes from uh, Oberheim DMX, if I'm not mistaken, Alex, Mr. Ball. Let's have a listen first. Now you can hear some a gated reverb here on the snare. And I have it here, it's called snare verb. And listen to what's going on. Off. On. Now, if we solo this, let's have a listen. What I've done here is that I have taken a duplicate of this track down to this track, and then I have pitch shifted it uh, down four semitones and 25 cents. So I tuned this while I was playing the other snare to get it to sound as good as possible. Then, um, I put up a Valhalla plate on it, full mix. I tuned that as well to get the nicest ring of it. And then I put in a gate to cut it off so it's not so long. And then um, there was a little bit too much uh, between uh, 2 and 5K. Uh, and I like this dynamic uh, EQ for, for these kinds of things. And then I boosted a bit uh, above uh, 8K as well. Now, and then in the end, we have a compressor as well. And that will bring out the tail of uh, the reverb uh, over here even more. So um, let's have a listen to it again. Now let's have a listen with it, with the other stuff going on and off. Off. On. Off. On. Off. Great. So that's some of the tricks that was was used here. Um, a limiter on the hats. Uh, that's what I would call a normal tom curve. All these. And not, not much compression or anything on the toms. Then down here, uh, I have the big, huge claps. Uh, actually, a bit inspired of Quincy Jones' old song from the ending of the 70s called I No Corrida. Um, we can have a listen to them here. So here I've taken the original clap, which is this one, and duplicated again down here. No, sorry, I didn't. Um, I actually crafted a new uh, one. I forgot, I'm sorry. I crafted a new clap that I found. And then on this one, through console one, and then through quick house again to spread it. And this one is, is then tuned as well. And then through a limiter to take out too much of uh, uh, the transients. So we can put it a bit back in the mix. And then uh, these two are then layered. Right, and then on top and with the rest. Great, and then to accentuate it, uh, I've also done some extra things to it here in the in the breakdown. So we have this.
then, as you will also see, that there are cuts here, and these are all automated up so that they are louder. Um, this also happens to the guitars uh, beneath it. So here we have the cymbals uh, as supplied from Mr. Ball. Um, I thought that they needed dubbing, so I threw in some extra cymbals here uh, using uh, Easy Drummer. Uh, this is a great plugin to do such uh, things. I also used a tambourine uh, in the ending here. Find a nice uh, sample. I put in good, nothing special about that. Then we have the verse uh, bass uh, going here. And I'm a big fan of a Wave Space Rider. That's pretty good. It doesn't catch at all, but most of it. And then I use a quite conservative setting, and then I use a limiter in the end. Um, let's see. So this is almost cut, catching it all and making it really even, but then we can put on uh, the limiter. So that's usually what I do on basses um, like this, even uh, uh, even acoustic basses. Here we have the uh, solo and the verse. Not much going on here, not much needed. It's a very nice synthesizer. And here, uh, Alex uh, dubbed two very interesting uh, synths on top of it for the second part. And we can have a listen to that uh, here. So we have this one. But then uh, he also recorded this one. And then uh, he called it right and left. Uh, I did that. I panned them right and left. But um, they were not so well balanced, uh, top and bottom, I thought, and a little bit too boxy sounding for my taste. So what I did instead was that I panned them center and then I put an auto panner on them. A little bit out of uh, phase with each other, of course, uh, so as to not pan uh, the same place uh, at, at once. Um, and I even think I, I didn't mess up the rates, but it messed up the phase by, you know, six degrees. We can see that here. So they are swirling a little bit back and forth, left and right, uh, to give the impression of uh, more movement and uh, to the sound. Like that. Let's move on. The next element we have here is the synth power chord. Um, it comes in here uh, at the first verse uh, and does something funny. Also together with the formant synth down here at the bottom, which we will look at later. That's the one that comes in at the beginning and talks to us. Now, um, let's go back to the synth power chord here and have a look uh, what's going on. Um, the EQ low card and took out some a little bit of nastiness here and then I have a limiter on and that's pretty much to to enhance the tails of, uh, of the signal. And that's usually what I use a, a limiter for. A limiter is to balance the, the, the snap of the signal and the tails of, uh, of the signal. Um, let's have a listen here. Uh, to it. That's with, without. It gets much more pokey. You can really hear wow, wow, but and the rest of uh, the, the 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 more gritty details of the tails gets lost. Uh, a bit more so but with the limiter on we can sort of enhance them on on off so
So um, the relationship between uh, the high stuff at the beginning and the tails here change. So this gets shaved off and then we hear more of the tails. And, uh, and I thought that those sounded really great and it really enhances the, the, the character of the instrument. So that's what I went for. Let's have a look at the pads. Those were supplied as um, four individual tracks that I have grouped into one, and then applied some EQing on it. Uh, sending a bit off to the long reverb here. Well, I love vintage verb. And I'm automating a bit of it in, uh, in the ending to prolong that um, a bit. Now, um, let's have a listen to it. It's just lovely. And then you get this. And this. And they also come in uh, the ending here when we have the big boom. And also um, there's an extra bit here that I made um, that we can focus a bit on. But let's hear them here in the ending. Very nice. And we can try and mute them. And as you can hear, they carry a lot of weight in the song. Without. And I don't really have to say with when I turn these on. It's pretty apparent that uh, what they do. Now... Actually, the song only contained, uh, when I got it, we had this small breakdown going here. And when it came around the second time, it would only repeat once. But the first time I heard the song, in my head, I just expected it to come twice. So I duplicated that and sent it to Alex and he said, yeah, okay, go. So we did like this to give it more, you know, drama and dynamics. Like that. But then I, I, I had the feeling that we needed some 70s flanger on that. What I did was I mixed down the pads and then I put them through uh, Waves Enigma uh, flanger. So I got like this. And then I mix that in on top. So we get this. So we end up with this. Without. without just to you know really accentuate this uh, huge uh, breakdown here and to give it some more drama let's have a look at the synth that starts the song it's the formant uh, synth and it comes in a left and right uh, thing so it's been dubbed twice and there's a bit of reverb on it uh, already 
So um, the only thing that's happening to it is that it's been sent off to the parallel uh, compressor. And um, we have got this EQ curve uh, going as you see here. It sounds like this. <laughs> Now, I thought that this sounded really great, and I actually asked Alex what uh, what has been done to it, and uh, this is what he wrote back to me. I used to sample and hold as an audio rate down sampler, and that makes the performance sound amazing. Well, uh, Mr. Paul, you got that right. It sounds really great. Next up, we have the leads. Um... They come after the first verse, and then they come in the ending. And this, the, the sounds are a bit different, so I split them up into two groups. Um, and then when we look at the first group here, um, I have a bit of uh, parallel compression going on, a bit of waves doppler, which is this one. It's a bit like a chorus. It splits up the signals into four, delays them a bit, and then it detunes them a bit. Uh, so it's like a static chorus, like that. And then a bit of uh, the long uh, Valhalla vintage uh, verb uh, um, to spice it up a bit. And it sounds like this. It's just lovely. And then in the end, we've got the second lead coming up really behind the vocals. And it sounds a little bit like this. So, what's happening here? And here we have the overall overall EQ, um, but. Those sounds were still a bit different to each other, so I had to do some individual EQing. Uh, and still, while I did that, there were some build-ups in these areas that I had to to uh, get rid of, and too much low end. And then I accentuated the tops, uh, the high end, uh, a bit. Then we send off to the parallel compressor uh, a bit of chorus, a bit of Doppler, and a bit of long reverb. Um, but what's also going on here when we investigate um, the single tracks is that I'm using the same tr trick here as I did uh, one of the other leads was that I'm using an auto panner instead of panning in hard left and hard right I'm using the auto pan here with a uh, offset and another one here with a, a different offset so that they will not be panning in phase not be staying in the same uh, place and time and then uh, we get this um, So we get this very interesting swirling sound, but still we have a nice center because uh, the double here is not subject to panning, so that will keep the center uh, going. And here we go. That was simply two. Let's move on to the sequences we have here in green. Not much has been done to them. Uh, they've been grouped and then a basic utilization, and then I have a limiter on it uh, to enhance the tails, uh, as I uh, showed you before. Uh, here we have the sound of it. I tried without the limiter. Then we can really hear it poking and here it's, it gets more balanced and we can hear the mix. So it's a very important element here. It also comes in here at the ending. Like this.
so there are lots of different details in these tracks. And then we have them in the ending, where they are more rhythm-like. So, that was the sequences, which leads us on to the uh, vocals that we have here in light blue. Um, quite a good deal of processing is going on here to, to get the, the angel-like sound <clears throat> that I wanted for this. Um, so, don't be shocked. Um, we can hear them in solo, although they might not necessarily sound that nice in solo, but, <clears throat> sorry, we don't really care for solo, but uh, let's have a listen. If we look a little deeper into it, uh, we have multiple DSing going on, and uh, the chain we've got here for the vocal lead is pretty standard for what I do with uh, vocals. Um, instead of having uh, one compressor that's doing all the, uh, the job, I'm spreading in, uh, onto two compressors that take a little bit each, and then uh, at the end of the chain, uh, we put it through a limiter that will shave off uh, the last bits that we uh, might need. We can try have a look here. So these are only compressing, you know, two to four or five dBs, and then we have the limiter here at the end taking care of the rest. And then, of course, it's bust and group, uh, and here we have some extra compression and also a limiter in the end. We need to do that to get the wall of sound uh, going. Um, I'm not using console one as much, the EQ for that, sorry, oops, uh, because I'd rather use a dynamic EQ like this. Um, and much of this has been done, not in solo, but while playing it uh, with the rest of the tracks to, to get this really to gel and melt. If we look at the other tracks, uh, you know, this, uh, this is the backing number one, which is a different track that has a different EQ. But uh, again, I use the same trick with uh, serial compression. Um, then I have some vitamin going to, to get some nice S's and body. And then a de and then a limiter. And then they are all grouped. And then actually we have a bit of de going on here as well. And then a limiter for last. So that's the vocal chain. Oh, you'll be free. That's your equity. No. We can uh, have a look at the mastering chain. Here we have the mastering chain up. Um, console one comes in first with a uh, with a low cut around 30 hertz, and then I have a, the linear phase multiband compressor up, um, which I use to to shape uh, the overall sound. We can try and uh, mute it. It is not so prevalent on this this mix but but the volume of this area is really important you've got a lot of mud here that you can clear up with this so and um, after that I go into the uh, vitamin uh, it gives some very nice harmonics uh, we can try and hear oh. oh. 
so it's like it's jumping a bit more out of the speakers. And I like to use vitamin on every, everything that uh, needs a lot of boost or anything like that. I think it's good for that. Then we have a bit of stereo spread going on, only 14%, not much. And then at the end, the L2 uh, limiter, and then your lead uh, mastering uh, loudness meter to make sure that um, we hit around minus 11 uh, short term. I think we're a little bit lower on this one. Yeah. Because the ending does not lend itself too nice to too heavy limiting. Um, uh, the, the pad sort of doesn't really make that sound nice. So we can't press this uh, as much as, as uh, you would do with, uh, let's say, more rhythmic and pokey music uh, without this you know, carpet uh, of pads uh, running in the background. Okay, so this pretty much rounds it up. I hope it has been interesting. Have a nice day.